Good morning folks, Kathleen here. Here I am. It's um, oh, about 11am, Saturday the 22nd of February 2025. So today is the 14th anniversary in about two hours time of the big earthquake that killed 185 people or so in Christchurch. Um, the radio we have today is what we would might call in the trade, not sure what trade, a belly buster. Um, what an enormous radio compared to the other small ones I've had here uh, the last few days. Um, it's a Bell Venus model from 1957. Um, if we look in the back, it's mostly empty. The guts, so to speak, are almost the same as on a little wee Bell Colt. The chassis is a little bit bigger and more spread out. Uh, there's not things missing. These holes were already there. Um, it does have the ability for a gramophone input. It's got a switch for it. Um, I wonder if someone's taken it out. Oh, well, here you go. I've learned something. Because it's got... Um, Wide gram and normal gram switch around the front. Um, but anyway, the speakers... Uh, I mentioned another one. Sometimes the speaker's actually connected to the case. So if you remove the chassis, um, you need to unplug it. There's not a lot of spare space in that um, cord. So and it uh, balances a little bit on the uh, table here. We do have to be a bit careful. We've got our piece of paper. Now, before I started the camera, <coughs> I had a bit of a cough. That's the idea. Um, I, as for the, uh, with my earlier ones, I mentioned, put the 15 watt bulb in, the, the highest resistance one you've got, connected it up, left it turned on for a few minutes, and uh, on the voltmeter it was only showing uh, Actually, it started showing 30 volts when I first turned it on. It gradually built up to 75. Um, then I swapped to the 25 watt bulb for a few minutes. That showed about 120 volts. And then I went to the 40 watt bulb. And it went up to about 145 volts. So we've got the... Uh, as said in the other videos we've checked the uh, checked the insides for any obvious faults dead dead mice or whatever anything fallen in there we check the cord uh, we check the plug for any obvious defects we're using an earth leakage circuit breaker otherwise known as an RCD residual current device otherwise known as GFCI ground fault current interrupter otherwise known as a safety switch so it's plugged into something that will possibly quite likely save your life if you get across it um, the radio is in quite nice condition a little bit of a mark on the fabric there but quite nice condition 1957 so what does that make it now uh well in another few years that would be 70 uh yeah 60 67 does that make it years old at the moment yeah we'll turn it on at the safety switch rcd gfci um we've already got the switch turned on here now, let's have a go. And the bulb came on and it's dimmed down a little bit. So that's fine. It's fine if it comes up fairly bright initially and then dims down to be very dim. Remember, the, the radio has a total draw at most. It's rated about 40 watts, 50 watts, something like that. Anywhere between about 25 and 50 or 60 watts. Not even hearing a hum at the moment, but it takes the valves a while to warm up. Now this one, for all the size of it, <coughs> it's um, it's only broadcast. It's only AM, AM medium wave. Uh, it's got separate bass and treble, uh, bass and treble, and it's got, as I say, wide gram, narrow gram, and normal radio. So, as I say, I couldn't see a little socket on the back. I wonder if that was removed. But when I looked at a picture online of what the back of it's supposed to look like, it looked, looked like this. Right, we're ready to go up to full power. 
the voltmeter goes up to the full 230 volts of our service supply. Listening to in sport at the moment, we um, and we can add them to our playlist. Uh, double eight, double three. Uh, if my brother's listening, do not send through what you used to listen to, mate. I, I, I don't want to embarrass you. Uh, double eight, double three. Um, send your psych up music through to us. At the top of the hour, we always do the latest in sports headlines. It's nearly six after eleven. Just trying to avoid the music. Finalist last year, and now officially the favourites at the TAB after a big one last night in Super Rugby. Uh, it was seven. Golly, how low does that go? Now, the volume control is a bit um, hinky. Um, as you see, it all goes in the first little wee bit of the volume control. Star winning by Very hard to get the volume at just a pleasant level. Oh, actually, that knob's loose. That wants to come off. I'll check that screw later. Oh, yeah. Thanks, thanks, Daniel. There was some beauties in there too. There was some real beauties. Right, well, sport radio is full of music at the moment. Now, what I will do, um, it's not really going to show up well for us. Although it's only medium wave AM, medium wave broadcast. Get that light on there a bit. This radio is made up in New Zealand for the New Zealand market, keep in mind. And we've got three markings of stations here. Um, North Island, South Island and Australia. And I see they're mostly, um, the call sign starts with the letter 2, so, mo so mostly New South Wales, a few Victoria, one Queensland and one West Australia. Now because back in like the 50s or 60s, the... Um, especially the government stations, they put out uh, lots of watts and were, were received over a wide area. There were less stations in those days, less interference, and um, even on a medium wave radio, certainly at night, you'd string up a big long aerial and you could listen to Australia, uh, several Australian stations would come in on the medium wave. And for anyone that doesn't realise, uh, New Zealand and Australia are a thousand miles across apart at the closest point. Um, so that's about a thousand miles apart, about 1,600 kilometres. Three, Pavuma, Vandadusa, Markram uh, also got past 50, while Kagisa wrote three for 36 off 8.3 overs. Yeah, and they've managed to sport radio. I've got lots of music on underneath this speaking today, so, but it is going. Now, there was an issue with this. Um, what we're going to do now, we will in Boston. Uh, Go down to low power the hero. and then we'll turn that off. Turned off at the safety switch. The tuner was somewhere around about the middle. This is the tuning here. And I, I checked this earlier. I went up the dial and I heard a couple of stations. And that's fine. And I started tuning back. And it went back a tiny little bit. The tuner indicator. And it wouldn't go any further. The knob would turn, but it wasn't going. <coughs> now, I thought it could just be gummed up with a bit of dust or something. Now, another radio I tried the other day had the same thing. And I haven't made the video on that one yet, because it's going to need to get a little bit... Somebody a bit old and wiser than I to give some words of wisdom. But I, I was able to reach this thing here, and I thought, well, it's probably alright just if I give it a little turn with my finger to... Um, to, to help it it might just be gummed up with a wee bit of dust or something so as I was using the knob I just put my finger in there and uh, of course officially I would be saying with the radio turned off at the time that is what I would be saying officially um, even uh, remember a, a, an RCD ELCB GFCI a safety switch will usually prevent someone from being electrocuted if there's an electrical problem not absolutely guaranteed money back 100% always. Anyway, by turning the knob and touching this big wheel that's attached to the tuning capacitor here, and I just gave it a little bit of a helping hand and got the pointer going back the other way. I'm indicating with my hand here, which is... Uh, I was indicating with my hand, which is uh, beyond the radio. Uh, the radio is blocking. Uh, yeah, so just by helping that with my little finger a little bit, tuning the knob, got it going... And it now seems to tune fine. I think it was just gummed up with a wee bit of dust. Now, 
I've got another radio and I was about to make a video the other day and I had the same problem but the uh, the arrangement of the tuner inside the chassis uh, in, in the back of the radio is um, a different more complex and I really didn't want to damage it so I've left that one for now and I'm going to take that into the um, to the gurus at the vintage radio club and just ask for some words of wisdom on it but uh, I was astonished how loud this goes and you might yes the volume control is a bit hinky um, but you might um, you might uh, say well it's got you know a, a, a more powerful valve lineup or something compare I'm gonna put power back on um, then for instance the the Bell Colt which is in a much smaller case and has a much smaller loud speaker but no, the valve lineup's exactly the same. So, you know, by all rights, the volume should be the same. Improved slightly by a larger speaker, be slightly more efficient, perhaps, at turning the electrical signals into sound. But, um... But, um... Now, I've noticed with some other ones that I've had, even on low power through the 40 watt bulb the ministry for regulation has it, received extensive feedback on the red tape hindering the industry in ooh. response the ministry is working with medsafe and the ministry of health to reassess these nearly 20 year old regulations oh that's good to know isn't it for more information listen to the rural roundup oh we will we'll listen to the rural roundup later um so i'm astonished that the same valve lineup just working through a larger speaker in a larger cabinet puts out such an amazing amount of sound and yes this is this is hinky oh, no. I mean it should go smoothly for, through very low volume up to nearly full not just go almost zero to full with just a tiny little and you'll never be flat when it's time to tap and go oh you've got to tap and go mate you've got to tap and go no leaming jb hi-fi or harvey norman there we go Clean house better than a Canterbury Ford back, and it's all thanks to the team at Container Waste. Oh, there we go, Container Waste, mate. Around your garden or home, Container Waste has the correct skip for any job, whether it's green waste, general waste, or hard fill. Their skips range from three to seven cubic meters, and best of all, Container Waste will manage all the logistics. Oh, there we go, Container Waste. They'll manage all the logistics, and um, I mean that would fill your lounge room in. Um, 1957 with the whole family could enjoy the uh jiving to the music of that 57 would that have, would elvis been around about then um but uh buddy holly and the big bopper and all that actually i can't see a glow in the dial there yeah the dial lamps may not be going Being very careful because it's powered on. Eh, I can't see a place for a dial lamp to go. I wonder if this didn't have a dial lamp. And not absolutely every radio did. Unless that's it there. Yes, there's one on each side. Well, I might have a look at those later, after it's fully unplugged. But there we go, the Bell Venus. Same valve lineup as a little wee Colt. Session with Daniel McCarty. Oh! Sport Nation. There we go, Sport Nation with Daniel McCarty. Now, um, yeah, but that goes really well. Um, possibly that was a New Zealand made volume control they, they weren't the best uh, there was a, a system of import licensing and, and to encourage uh, uh, New Zealand uh, to, to produce their own things and so something like volume controls were made locally and they just went up to the same quality as some of the overseas made ones so sometimes when people restore radios they try to they just put in a new one uh, some people they try to retain the original if possible, even if it's not a hundred percent. But I'm I'm very pleased with that. That's going very well. Um, we'll make a note. Where's our piece of paper? We'll make a note. Build. 
likely to think what the score would have been if they had. <laughs> oh, I wouldn't know what the score would have been. So we'll make a note that the volume control is definitely very sort of icky, um, but and that we don't seem to have either of the dial lights working. Um, we'll look up what kind of bulbs they have. We might better get replacements for them. Um, oh dear, compared to the Bell Colt at about 14 or 15 pounds, do you see the price this one was? We knew. 23 pounds and 10 shillings and zero pennies. 23 pounds and 10 shillings. So it was fully one and a half times the price of a Bell Colt, even though the chassis itself is mostly the same. I'll make a note here on my piece of paper um, that the um, I did have the issue with the tuning but after just helping it with my finger a little bit that first time to come back it seems to be fine so I think just a little build up of dust in that in there all right folks this has gone on for long enough um, cricket so he's just he just scored a breezy tweet. oh he's just scored in the cricket there we go we'll turn that to low power the bulb comes back on and we can turn it off with our safety switch, RCD, GFCI. And that is it for this radio. 1957, Bell Venus, 5 valve, 23 pounds, 10 shillings. <whistles> Are you still sitting there? What, watching? Expecting words of wisdom? <laughs>